God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's going to fulfill. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, saints. Don't give up on God. Because he won't give up on you. He's able. Sing it. Oh, oh, oh. He's able. He's able. Oh, oh, oh. He's able. He's able. Sing it. Oh, oh, oh. He's able. He's able. Oh. Oh, oh, sing him, God is able. God is able to do just what he said he would do. Thank you, Jesus. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God. Guess what? Because he won't give up on you. He's able, sing it. Oh, oh, oh. He's able, he's able. Oh, oh, oh. God is able, God is able. God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's going to fulfill Every promise to you. Don't give up on God. Because he won't give up on you. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. Because he won't give up on you. One more time. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. Because he won't give up on you. He's able Oh, 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 he's able, he's able, oh, oh. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works in us. Bless your people this morning. Minister to them. Somebody need direction this morning. Someone need a word. Somebody needs healing this morning. Someone needs a miracle. Somebody need a breakthrough direction for their lives. Move through this broadcast. Lift them up, God. Let the word get down in their spirits. Not our will. But let your will. And God, that person who's praying for direction this morning and clarity, answer their prayer this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, somebody say amen. Good morning to you, saints, as we continue our series. God never fails. He never fails. And on this morning, we're talking about faith to win. Glory to God, faith to win. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And for by it, the elders obtain a good report. Lord, have mercy. You know what? Let me read Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 from the Amplified Translation of the Bible. Now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of the things we hope for, being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality, faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. That's how come you know God's going to do something before it even manifests, before you even see it. There is a knowing that comes into the heart of the child of God. There is a conviction. There is an assurance that comes on the inside of children of God. That's the Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Ghost, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost inside of them. Letting them know what you are believing God for is going to happen. Mighty God, mighty God. Faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of the things we hope for being the proof 
of things we do not see and the conviction we are convinced the conviction of their reality faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses my natural eyes can't see it my natural hands can't touch it but in the eyes of faith through the eyes of faith i can see it my hands of faith is feeling the thing my spirit is picking it up amen glory to god now this brings us to Mark chapter 10, 46 through 52, Jesus and his disciples. And they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. Blind Bartimaeus, you talk about being in the right place at the right time. You got to realize this Jericho is the place that Joshua conquered. Jericho had been conquered by Joshua, and here is blind by the mass in the promised land and can't even fully enjoy it because of limitations placed on him. But who knows that God knows how to take the limitations off of you? Or somebody grabbing that word right now. I dare someone to lift your hands and say, Lord, Take the limitations off of me. And you notice it says he sat by the highway side begging. He is actually using the strength he had. He was using the strength he had. Yep, I may not be able to see, but I'm not going to just give up. If I have to beg, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to wait till my chains come. He was sitting by the highway side begging, but little that blind by the mess knew that sitting right in that spot was about to pay off. <laughs> no telling how long blind Bartimaeus had been in that spot or who had to take him there and lead him to that place on a daily basis. But his tenacity and his aggressive spirit, his determination was about to pay off. His determination was about to be rewarded. His entire life was about to be changed. Who knows that all you need is one, and just, just sometimes one encounter with Jesus can turn everything around. Lord, help us, Jesus. He sat by the highway side begging. The night, that, that night, he went to bed. He went to bed before this particular day, not knowing that that would be the last night he go to bed blind. That would be the last night he go to bed as a beggar. Lord, help me, Jesus. Somebody is coming into their miracle. Someone's getting ready to come into a turnaround. Someone is coming into a place where you're about to encounter the resurrected Jesus. Verse 47, and when, when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth. It wasn't just any Jesus. It was Jesus of Nazareth. He began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. He said, I know it. I believe you are the Messiah. You are the promised king of Israel. You are the chosen one. You are God's anointed. He began to cry out and say, have mercy on me. But what made him cry out was the beginning of the verse said, when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth. No, 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 no doubt blind Bartimaeus had heard all of the great miracles that Jesus had worked. He opened the eyes of the blind. He raised the widow of Nain's son from the dead. Pull him out of the coffin, Lord. Help us, Jesus. Stop the whole funeral procession when he saw the widow woman crying and went and touched the coffin and took the young man, Lord, have mercy, brought him out of the coffin. He's a miracle worker. No doubt blind by the man's heard of how Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead who had already been in the grave four days and began to rot and stink. He heard how the woman with the issue of blood pressed through the crowd and touched the hem of his garments and was made whole. Blind by the man said, now it's my turn. Glory to God. He said, it's my turn. I got to do something. I can't stay in this position. I got to use my faith to get out of it. And he cried out the more. He cried. Listen to the next verse. And many charged him. Many. This is how you know you're close to a miracle. Everything begins to come against you. 
My God, the devil will throw everything at you, the kitchen sink, the bathroom sink. He would throw the shower curtains, the shower rod. He would throw everything at you to get you discouraged. And many charge him that he should hold his peace. It's amazing how people who got their sight want to tell someone who's blind or just hush. No, you have no idea what this, what this man was dealing with. You have no clue. You can't even relate. Isn't that amazing? You know, people just want to calm you down. You don't know what I've been going through. You don't know how hungry and desperate I want to get out of this situation. You don't know how many nights I cried my eyes out, believe in God to get me out of this situation. And now I got my moment and you want to tell me to hold my peace. You want to tell me to shut up. Ah, you tripping. You ran into the wrong person this morning. Now they were about to see a side of blind by the man that they had never seen. This is a, this is a man who, who have faith in his heart, who's believing for a miracle, who, who's believing God to turn his situation around. And many charge him that he should hold his peace. Guess what? But, I love that. <laughs> but he cried the more a great deal. He said, you think you heard me cry. You're going to really hear me now. He out. He outdid, he outperformed his opponents. They told him to shut up, but he cried the more great deal. Lord have mercy. You got to press through. That's the pressure point. My God, right before the space shuttle breaks, breaks out of Earth's atmosphere, there's that friction and tension and sparks and fire and everything is flying. Why? Because the shuttle is, is about to break through into a whole nother, into another atmosphere. Come on, somebody. Lord, have mercy, and right before you break through, you're going to run into that intensity, that friction, right before the sound barrier was broken. Mr. Yeager talked about how the plane shook like it wanted to break apart, and right after all the turbulence, wham, he broke the sound barrier. Boom, he broke through. That's what all the friction is about. Don't pull back. Press in there. Press in there. Press in. Press in. Press in. I'm talking to somebody. Press in. But he cried the more great deal. And thank God he did. Because the next verse said, And Jesus stood still. He got his attention. Jesus stopped and looked in his direction. And commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man saying unto him. Be of good comfort. Arise. He is calling you. What a turn of events. The same people who shouted him down. Told him to sit. Now that God stepped up to the plate. Now that God was showing him favor. God said I'm on his side. Jesus said, I'm on his side. Now they have, to, they have to change their talk. Now the same people who are just telling them, shut up, is now saying, be of good comfort. Arise, he called it. This is why you can't, you can't listen to people. This is why you got to obey the Holy Ghost. You got to obey your faith in God. People are flimsy. They are up one minute and down the next. But Jesus Christ is consistent. The same yesterday, today, and forever. I am the Lord your God. I change not. He's consistent. Be of good comfort. Arise. He's calling you. And he took his beggar's garment. He took his beggar's garment. He said, I ain't going to need this anymore. He took it and he cast it away. And went to Jesus. You know, someone had to lead him to him. But he threw his beggar's garment away. Even before he got the miracle. That's faith in action, saints. My God, what garment you need to get rid of. What garment, what beggar's garment you need to get rid of this morning. This is faith in action. He casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, what will thou that I do unto you? What is, blind bottom is, what do you want me to do for you? 
This man knew exactly what he wanted. Paul said, this one thing I do, this one thing I do. The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. I've been praying and believing for this moment. I never seen a bird a day in my life. I heard them, but I haven't seen them. I heard the dogs barking, but I haven't seen them. I touched the knob of a door, but I never seen it. I hear the water running down by the lake when they take me out there, and I feel the breeze from the lake blowing over me. But I never, I never can see the water. I can just hear it, and I can feel it. But I can't, I don't, I don't know what it looks like, Lord. I never seen the sky, the moon, the stars, the clouds. I just want my sight, Lord. I can hear and I can feel. I can taste, I can touch. But I can't see. I've never seen a chicken. I've never seen a plate of food. I felt it and it tastes mighty good. But I've never seen it a day in my life. Lord, I want my sight. He's asking for something he never had. I'm talking to someone who's asking God to do something for you that you never had. God's going to give you a miracle. What did Je- How did Jesus respond? He said, Lord, blind by said, I want my sight. Jesus said unto him, go your way. Your faith, man, your faith have made you whole. Your faith, your faith. I've made you whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Faith to win. Faith to win. This is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. Have faith in God. You have faith to win. We're about to host three nights of miracles in the city of McKinney. I'm inviting all of you to attend. We will announce the date soon. I'm inviting all of you to attend. You that need a miracle, you that need a breakthrough, you that need a touch from God, you that need to be refreshed, you that's having a fight, getting your prayer answered, there is something about coming together with people of like precious faith. There is something about a corporate faith. There is an anointing that's released. One of you can put a thousand to flight, but two of you can put 10,000 to flight. How about we all come together? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, bless your people under the sound of our voice this morning. Strengthen them, encourage them, give them the faith to win. Give them the faith to win. Step into that situation, turn it around. Turn it around, God. Turn it around. Turn it around, God. Turn it around. In the name of Jesus Christ, turn it around, God. Turn the tables in their favor. Answer their prayer. Heal that sick body. Bring that marriage back together. Bring that child who ran away. Bring him back home. Give him a financial breakthrough. Step in and turn things around. The doors have been slammed shut in so many people's faces. Grant them favor and open doors. Your word says the desire of the righteous shall be granted. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when the desire is fulfilled, it's a tree of life. Fulfill that desire. In the name of Jesus, mean Pastor Amy, pray for your people. We put them in your hands. In Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. Listen, I want to give someone an opportunity to come to Jesus. He loves you so much. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. He loves you with everlasting love. I surrendered my life to him January the 3rd, 2.30 in the morning, 1993. And I never turned my back on him after that. Have it always been easy? No, but he's always been there. 
He wants to forgive you of your sins. I want you to bow your head and close your eyes in reverence to God and say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you died on Calvary Cross for me. They buried you in a borrowed tomb, but on the third day, God raised you from the dead. You are now seated at God's right hand. And soon and very soon, you are coming again. From this day, I turn my back on the world, the flesh, and the devil to serve the true and living God and his son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Amen. If you prayed that prayer with me and meant it with all of your heart, let me and my beautiful wife, Pastor Amy, be the first to say to you, welcome into the family of God. Welcome into God's family. You are saved. Your sins are forgiven. I want you to type below this video right now, I've just surrendered my life to Jesus. Heaven is rejoicing over the decision you made. To give in this offering, you can visit us online right now at seanpinder.net forward slash give. You can also give through the ministry PayPal account. That address is paypal.me forward slash Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also give through the ministry app. Many of you have it on your smart devices. You can also give through the ministry Zell account. The ministry Zell email address is info at seanpinder.net. You can also give through the ministry cash app account. The ministry cash app address is the dollar sign Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also text to give. All you have to do is text the letters SPM to the number 45888 and a link will automatically be sent to you. You can also give through the ministry Venmo account. Our ministry Venmo account address is at Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also give by mailing your donations into the ministry. Just remember to make your checks and money orders out to Sean Pinder Ministries, P.O. Box 2726, McKinney, Texas, 75070. Never forget, me and Pastor Amy, we love all of you so much. We will never take you for granted. And thank you for making this broadcast possible. God bless. See you again on tomorrow on another morning prayer broadcast.